Hello, 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 and welcome to this topical life. Today we have a special guest because you know all our guests are special. But today, Donna Parker, you guys, okay, this is a name you're going to remember because you might have already seen Blondie's Baked Goods um, at your local stores. And if you're not local to Oregon, I guarantee you someday you will see them um, because you know what? They're amazing. And we'll talk more about all of that. But today we're actually focusing on a, her, Donna's story. And um, this story is, is very impactful and has a lot of hope. And what's interesting already just he hearing her talk is that um, what I loved what she said was, you know, she's been through a huge chunk of her story and is in the middle of her story and then is holding on to the hope that's going to come down the road. And I think it's so amazing to see someone in the middle of the road, like knowing that you're walking in faith, not knowing what's going to happen, which we all in a way do. But for her, there's been a lot in the past that has happened and there's a lot that has happened up to this point. And so there's a lot of faith being had with walking forward. So she's just ha is such in a beautiful place and um, we're going to impact her story. So Donna, tell us a little bit about yourself um, and we'll start. Thank you, Tiffany, for that amazing intro. That was really very kind of you. And I'm super honored to be a part of your podcast. So thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, I'm Donna Parker. I am a full-time single mama to a sweet little five-year-old boy named Colby. Um, background work-wise, I've been an esthetician for over 10 years. So a lot of my work has been within the beauty and wellness industry. Um, also a uh, holistic health coach too. So I really geek out on healthy food and helping people on their food journeys. And then I recently started a food company, um, baked good company called Blondie's Baked Goods. And that kind of is um, a little nutshell in terms of who I am and um, what I've been up to. Yeah. So um, thank you for sharing that. Also, we are going to just dive right in because there's so much I want to talk about. But um, to get to where you are today, let's start from the beginning. So Colby, let's start there. So you were married. Wait, you were married. Tell yeah. us from the start. Okay. What happened? So, um, really I would love to go a little more into like right before Colby, because sure. I think it really helps tie it all in together, but had a great career path within the sales portion of the beauty industry. So really involved with in that world thought that that was what I was going to do, that I was always going to have my um, hand in being a part of traveling and this businesswoman within the beauty industry. I actually got into um, a car accident and it completely rocked my world and changed everything for me because it forced me kind of out of that world and out of that thought process. And allowed me to just have a minute to breathe and think about how I want to make a difference in other people's lives and how I really want to serve other people. And that's where my food journey came in. Um, okay. With years of me struggling with my weight and my self-esteem and just navigating all of that, I decided to go back to school to be a holistic health coach. Um, and in that middle of that schooling, I got pregnant. I wasn't married at the time. So I was, um, it was really a shock uh, because I was told I couldn't have kids. And oh. so Colby is my little blessing in my world. And um, through my food journey of being gluten-free, which inspired schooling, which has then inspired me to support other people on their health journeys. Uh, when I was in my early 20s, I was told I couldn't have kids. Um, I have endometriosis and I've had a couple of surgeries from that endometriosis. And when I was about 23, I went to um, a specialist and he told me I needed to have a hysterectomy and um, that I would not be able to have children. And I just needed to just deal with the fact that that was my reality and have a hysterectomy and be done with it. And I did not accept that answer. 
uh, I did spend my adult life, my twenties believing that I couldn't have kids. So I did let him plant that lie to me, but I also didn't go forward with the surgery. I took my health in my own hands and researched and come to find out, and this was about 10 years ago, but come to find out that I had a gluten allergy and that was impacting a lot of the physical pain that I had that seemed to be associated to the endometriosis. And so lowering the inflammation in my body by eliminating gluten is honestly what I believe is how I was able to have a kid. Um, so I just didn't think I could have one. And so I really didn't have that on my heart because I released that. So I didn't have this like ache in me that I wanted to have kids. I just never even let myself go there. Um, but healing my body and changing my food uh, changed my health and on so many levels. And so God bless me with Colby, which was yeah. a blessing in disguise. Um, and really then inspired me further along in wanting to um, understand inflammation in the body and how to heal ourselves through what we eat. Um, And so I went into school to dive deeper into that to further educate myself so I could educate others. So that's, um, I just think that's so important because it really ties into why I have the food company that I have. Um, So, I got married when Colby was a year old and a couple of months uh, into that marriage found out that my ex uh, had hid a drug addiction that I was completely unaware of. I did not know you could be um, a full functioning, delightful person and hide something so uh, deep and life impacting for myself and Colby and, and for my ex. And so, um, I had, I'm going to pause you there for a second. I'm going to pause you there for a second, because I feel like I need to say this. This is a common thread with stories that I have heard. Women and men are completely blind to some of these things that come upon, upon like drug addiction, alcohol addiction, the whole shebang. And anyone on the outside listening could think or has thought through conversation like, well, how can they not know? How can they this, that? How can, you know, what signs were they not seeing? What this or that? And let me tell you, it is hideable, okay? (laughs) It is hideable and it's shocking. And there is an incredibly, incredibly smart, 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 smart people are fooled by this. And that's what makes it so scary and dangerous. And um, and, and even vulnerable to share. So thank you for sharing just even that in and of itself, because that is a vulnerable statement to just, you know, allow people to hear like, yeah, I was stooped, man, you know, and it's, that's, I just appreciate that, that honesty. And I think a lot of listeners do too. So, okay. Back to your story. Sorry. I had to say that. Um, thank you. So you found out that, you opened the bathroom door basically and saw something you saw, you saw him doing a drug. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I had no idea what it was, what was going on. It was just more of like a, a shock of, okay, you're obviously hiding something and up to no good. And so it took some time to figure that out and some help and some support. Um, but right away I knew that I obviously was walking into a problem and it had to get shut down. Um, And in those couple of weeks times of really trying to figure out like, what exactly are you using? What is happening? What's going on? I got to connect with some people that were really amazing and um, had walked through addiction themselves and had come out sober and was really helping other people their families or help other people get clean. And so um, that friend was really life-changing. Not only um, did they bring me to the church community that I'm a part of and the group of people that absolutely saved me in this walk, I was really educated on what to look for and how to understand what was 
rapidly unfolding in my life and very traumatizing. So I just believed that the only way that I, we'd get through this is that there needed to be inpatient rehab. And so um, I was able to get him to go that route. And I just thought, okay, this is like our new normal where I'm, I'm never going to have a drink again. I'm not, like, I just was like, I need to be so respectful of your walk and we're going to just live this like sober life all together, even though I didn't have a problem with controlling like my alcohol. I just wanted to honor the journey and be a supportive wife. We had been married for three months when all of wow. this happened. And how so, long was he addicted before? Do you know that? Yeah, a lot of, so they have you do a lot of work in, in rehab as the um, family member and as the person in rehab. And it had ha been a part of our whole relationship. And I would say, so maybe, maybe he was three years or so into really delving deeply into it okay. and hiding that very well. And you're right, like very smart. Um, like street smart, wise people uh, can be completely fooled about it because it's a it's a full time job to create um, smoke and mirrors and illusions and just just to make sure everything feels fine. And I think what shook it up was we moved. We um, moved from I had moved to the coast to be with him, and then we moved um, into the area we are now. And I just think switching the environment kind of was what surfaced, exposed it. Yeah, because there was, it was harder to create those different routines and um, illusions for me to not know that anything had been different in the behavior. And so, uh, yeah, the rehab piece of that really has you unfold as the person there, a lot of your lives and the ways that you were deceitful. So it was just this, like, these truth bombs just going off all the time of, this lie I had been living with this person. And so very, very traumatizing time, but I was committed to doing the work and having a life together and really had faith that we would make it through it. And he got home and shortly after that did not want to be married. And he just packed up his stuff one day and he moved back to the coast. He refused to go to counseling. He refused to go get help. He refused to do that. He thought he needed to live his life for himself. And so I'm left Was that with, such a shock with after all the work? Uh, yeah, I lost it. Like I lost my emotional sanity at that point and really struggled with a lot of horrific anxiety. Um, a slight depression. Uh, and I had struggled with some anxiety uh, throughout my twenties. And it just brought that and tenfold to the surface. And oh, so yeah. I really didn't get to like grieve what was happening or be, um, process a lot of it because on the flip side, I have, I had done a really good job of hiding all of the like massive trauma from my son, who's a baby at this point. And so I have to like put up a, a front during the day and then kind of lose it at night because wow. I'm trying to keep it all together and think that I'm doing all the right things by, I wasn't focusing on me. Um, thankfully, I was able to get counseling and support to just kind of work through that transition, but we lost our home because at that time I was a stay at home mom and he worked and um, the financial piece wasn't an issue, but with him leaving left all of our financial security. So we, um, have, yeah, we lost our home and it was extremely traumatizing to have a baby and no secure home for us to be in. It's one thing like being an adult and being like, all right, well, I guess I'll just kind of couch surf and I'll get back to the work field and I'll just pick up the pieces and yeah, when it'd be hard, but I'll pick up the pieces and figure it out. But when you have a baby involved, you can't do that. Like I just didn't want that for him. Yeah. And so um, thankfully through our church and net people networking, we were um, offered this 
great little mother-in-law house to live in. And so we've just been figuring it out for the past four years now in this, um, in this sweet little space that I really just believe God totally blessed us with. It's allowed me to have a safe place for my son and I to be and to um, heal and to grow in. And that was really needed um, walking through a really traumatizing life altering situation. I, I'll never forget like being on my knees and just being like, okay, God, I cannot do this without you. I give it all over to you. And um, I am so grateful. It's, it's, well, because I think you, coming. Because you had said that you were not religious at some point, or you were kind of like, yeah. how did that enter the picture for you? So like, I did not grow up. I didn't grow up in a faith-based family. Okay. Um, it was very neutral. It was kind of like, if you want to be a Christian, that's great. If you want to explore other religions, it's whatever feels good to you. So I didn't have that really core foundation. Um, I sought God as a child and kind of into the, in my um, early teens. And, and then I just had some really bad experiences with Christians. And I didn't know the difference between, I placed how they operated on, that's how God operates. Mm. He's mean, he's judgmental. You, if you don't do good things in this world, you're going to be punished. And so I was like, I don't want anything to do with him. And so through my teen and twenties, I really lived a life not having him. I couldn't even say God. It was the way I was treated was that traumatizing. Wow. That I couldn't even say God. I was like very the universe and whatever could, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just the, that piece I sought, um, religion or healing with everything else but God and because I thought he was the enemy and then um, I had some really amazing women who had walked me through mentoring me before I got married actually and telling me like this is not who God is this is not who Jesus is this is not the walk that you need to have with him. Like, it looks like this, this is who he is. He is a loving, like, so they opened up my eyes. So by the time, um, all of this went sideways, I was so ready to be in a church. I'd never been a part of a church community and I wanted to know who God was. And I wanted to build that relationship with him. It was perfect timing. Like he really did set me up in this like beautiful way to just be totally submissive to him. So that desire was there. I had been looking for churches to be a part of. Then like all of this crazy brokenness happened. I find a church community, get baptized, and then just dive head into the women in this community and being vulnerable because I had absolutely no choice but to be vulnerable and lay it all out there. And as a giver, that's really hard. It's really hard to say, I need help. And thankfully I did it for my son too. And so he was a great motivator because it was like, you got to put your issues to the side of asking for help. You have a baby you have to take care of. You need to ask these people for help. You need to share your story. And you need to hope that you will make it through it. That's interesting that you say a giver that it was hard for you to ask for help. Like almost kind of like with God, it was like you gave, you gave it a shot and then you got crapped on and then it's like, what? And then it, it was totally a misunderstanding. You know, it's just interesting that you would say, give, I'm a giver. And I had a hard time taking it when God wants to give, you couldn't do that because of, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Like, it was like you were, there was like a block there or something or something like that, that had to be removed so that you could receive yeah. like receiving is humbling yeah. too. Yeah. I mean, I I'm the same way. I'm the same way, but, but what you were saying too, just about, um, so the faith, you got to the point where you were on your knees 
and you were like, okay, God, you're going to have to take over. So at what point was that in the story? Like when you were basically homeless or what part did God enter that back? Like where you were just like, okay, I, I, it's, it's hands are in the air. What point was that then? Um, I would say I had a couple moments right before he went into rehab because at that point I was facing like, oh, I'm going to be a single mom. And like, that was a really big fear I had. And, um, so I feel like there was a piece of that where I'm like, I have no idea what my world looks like, but I know it's, it's getting flipped upside down and I see it coming. And then right right when he came home and I, and was like, I don't want this. I don't want to be with you. I don't want to do this life with you. I had that moment then too. It's, it's, it's crazy. Cause I can see myself. I can go back there to that moment. Cause it completely altered me. Um, and I knew like when you're that broken, like I had like rock bottom was my reality when we lost a home. Like there was no more further deeper down I could go. I was completely abandoned by my husband at the time, his family. Like it, I was all alone. So I had. What about his family? What was his? What was that? What were they Um, like? In denial. It was yeah. I think it was really hard for them to face because he hid it so well that nobody knew. Um, I think it was really hard for them to face that. And uh, they left him to, they left with is essentially how it went. I've had people, complete strangers, be more of service to us. Wow. Than they were. So that last part got cut on my Zoom thing. Um, they could be what, like they were, what happened at the end? Sorry. They, they decided to just not be a part of it. Oh, they, they went with him. Like it, oh, they went with him. Physically, oh, okay, like, okay. but essentially like okay. he left and they so left. did they. So it was like, I got this family and in-laws and siblings and new sets of parents. And then they all went like, once he left us, they all left us too. And so it was, I had my family, thankfully, um, they don't live nearby, but they did everything that they could to help kind of pick up these pieces, which was like, man, this is not their responsibility in a sense. If you look at the big picture, it's like, I did not create this trauma for us and this life altering situation. Um, but they were there and they were amazing at supporting us. But a lot of it relied on me and my walk with God and rebuilding my uh, community completely fresh. And that's where I would say um, I'm thankful for this journey. Uh, I've been pretty thankful for it as traumatizing um, as it has been. And I have moments where it still feels scary and traumatizing, uh, but it's a lot easier to handle those now. Um, but I'm a better person. I'm a more humble person. I'm a more loving person, giving person stronger than I ever thought I could be. And I've really seen what it means to, um, have a relationship with God and who he really is. And I, I got to see that through these amazing people that showed up for us and, um, like the place we live in, like, it, it just, that showed me like, oh, you, you use your people to, to show up and to be there. So like, he's carried me through this whole journey. And, um, I just, I know I went through it for a reason. I know I'm supposed to be, um, serving others and helping other women know that you will survive a really traumatic situation. I, I'm in the middle of it. Like I'm not here in the beginning stages. I've really seen how God has carried me through it and has been there for me and my son. And, but I'm not on this side where it's like this um, piece where I'm like, Oh, I'm remarried. And 
and we have a home of our own and we've got all these like these pieces that feel like I got to just take this brokenness and kind of put this little family unit back together. I'm in the middle of it in a very deep faith and trust walk. It's such a beautiful place, you know, um, to be because you, you, you are very content and yet someone on the outside might be like, I would not be content. I'm single. I'm living in someone else's situation sort of, and I'm starting a business and you're content and that speaks volumes. You know, I mean, that's what's so beautiful about having faith is just that there really is something to lean on, you know, and that, and there's choices too. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, one interesting part about your story that I'm interested in too, is just like, when I hear these stories, it's like in different ways, it's like, at what point are you choosing to not like, at what point it's like this balance of like you choosing you're, you're, you could have been like F all this, um, you know, like someone mm-hmm. take my, help me with my kid. Like I can't do it. Or I don't know, like be upset at your ex to just be like, I mean, you could literally live your life in resentment towards him and somehow, you know, just have all this hate, you know, um, he basically abandoned you and chose drugs over his life, um, or a good life or, you know, whatever, but you know, there's so many reasons why you could be upset, you know, and you, you've made a choice. You made a choice that is like, I choose my kid. I choose, this is what I want. This is what I'm going to do. And you've made the steps to uh, that happen, you know, and yet you give credit to God as well. So the question that I have is, is that, and I'm just processing with you, like, like how does it come to be this is what's so crazy about faith is like choices and god guiding you like you know you're you're going from point a to point b you're you are literally homeless okay literally abandoned by a man that was supporting you on many levels and you were lied to and you were left not only by him but his family Um, you know, and then you were putting on a happy face for your son just for health, you know, for getting through that. And you were struggling physically, mentally with all the stuff. It's like, where do you think it became like choice and faith and that one day at a time, one moment at a time where you're making the decision to just show up? I mean, would you say if you could bottle up into words, what it is to make a choice and also have faith at the same time? What is that word? What do you think? Oh, one word. I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, like, I don't think what I can... is it? Like, what, how, do you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, like someone will say, okay, for instance, um, okay. Like, like motivation, you know, there is that motivation and stuff like that to do, to, to, to build yourself back up to, to, you know, the scary somehow gets set aside and you just show up. Like, it's just a miracle. That aspect in and of itself to me is like so miraculous, you know, because I just picture myself in some situations, which I have been in where it's just like, how did I even take a shower that day? How did I even like call someone for an interview that day? Like, how did that even happen? But yet you made a choice to do that. And how did you have the motivation to do that? Like, do you get what I'm saying? Like you give credit to like, wow, God really got me through that. And yet you also did make a choice to show up too. So yeah, the word is indescribable, honestly, because it's a word that we can't come up with, but do you know what I mean? Like faith and making steps to a future like what steps are that you take that are given to you and what steps do you create? What steps are God, you know, like, isn't it just kind of like, wow, is it kind of overwhelming sometimes? Like, yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, it it totally is overwhelming. Okay. So let's figure this out then because you're in the in-between right now, you know, and I, you know, what I suspect is, is that, you know, when you get on the, 
the side of like when things might look a little different where maybe you have a man or maybe you do have a house that you're living in or that your business is going to take off, which it will, but all of these things are probably going to happen. And then there's going to be something that is still that you have to have faith about, right? I mean, faith in this life is just faith, 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 because this is a hard life, you know? Right. Yeah. So, you know, I didn't expect to talk about all this. This is always the case. Just the unpacking. It's of, good though. It's the unpacking of all of this stuff is just like, you know, I look at my life and I think, gosh, like I'm in the middle of it as well. Just like, and there's always going to be faith there. And that's, what's so beautiful about the journey, you know, like the end result is the end result, but the beauty really, I love just seeing where you're at right now. I love Thank the picture you. that I'm seeing just someone who is motivated to bring hope to others in a situation that doesn't might not look perfection, you know, but in your soul you are, you know, and that to me is the gold, you know, um, that is the gold in my opinion. Um, does it mean you don't want certain things? No. Does it mean you don't hard things are hard? No, but it's just amazing to see this situation that I, that you're describing, you know, um, that you've gotten through and then also just living, you know, so, but yeah. So like getting to the place where it was so hard, you know, to a woman out there or a man who was basically just dumped on the side of the road figuratively and, you know, in some ways, literally, um, mm -hmm. what are some things that you would tell somebody just from getting to making the choice that, you know, you wanted to make and actually doing the, doing the work, you know, what would you say? Um, that's really good. All those points that you made too. I do want to back up just a little on like the, where you were like, how, how did you make it through that? How did you you know, navigate that. Uh, first off, it, it, my child, like really, he was a big piece of this. Mm -hmm. It was so, at, he does not get to choose the way his parents operate and act. Like that was not his fault. Um, I owed it to him mm -hmm. to make sure he was not affected by this. Um, and so I worked really hard at that. And he was the reason I woke up in the mornings and that I did take showers and that I did get out of the house because I did not want him to feel the impact. I, I always think of the future him. I think of the adult him, the man that he could become. And I want to make sure that I have instilled in him um, a really good foundation of a really good childhood. So that was so important for me and a really big driver for me to make it through like the really traumatic times where until I could get some help, counseling was a big game changer for me. Um, really heavily leaning into a community of women that I trusted and that I respected that when I did struggle and I couldn't put on that good front that I could call and be like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know what this means to walk in faith. I don't know what it means. Like, I'm angry with God. I'm frustrated. Like, I flushed it out and so desperately refused to have my life be that broken ever again. Not that I don't believe that hard things will happen, but I had to learn. I had to learn to fully love myself and accept myself. And to have a, um, a higher bar for what I wanted my life to look like. So I think there were so many elements. I just, I just knew that I had to maintain being vulnerable and raw. And I think that was a big piece of my healing is I had to come to this place where I wasn't scared to share my story to ask for help. And that's where I would encourage somebody else going through a really hard season is do not be scared of judgment to share your story and to lay out your brokenness because there are good people and we have a good God in our life who will find the people to pick us up and to help us. 
um, I'm a huge advocate of counseling. I did a lot of counseling to teach me how to set healthy boundaries, how to um, take care of myself, love myself, because when you have lies, betrayal, adultery in the mix of what is supposed to be a very safe uh, place for you to be in, in a marriage and with a person, it was very easy for me to say, oh, well, that person did that because I wasn't good enough. Like it shatters a piece of your self-esteem and you could let it. And I just had to come to this place to say, I, I want to be completely built into somebody new. Like all of who I ever thought of myself to be and the life that I lived was completely shattered into a bunch of pieces. And it was up to me to look at those pieces and to have something be rebuilt. And I had to do this work outside of Colby too. Like, yes, he was the reason that I was able to make it through the very hard times and to put up a good front and to um, keep moving forward. But, at the, but when it really came down to it, I had to do this for myself because I deserve to have a better life. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. And, and that's something really important. Like, yes, somebody did this to me, but that does not define me and who I am and the life that I want to live and how I want to move forward. Um, and I, and I want to teach my son that like, this is all learning and growing. Um, I have just prided myself on making sure that he he doesn't live in the trauma, but he knows that we had a hard time. He doesn't know any of the details of what that looks like, but he knows that his dad's not around and doesn't show up for him. And, but we have a heavenly father who does. Like, I wonder what my life would have been like if I had known that truth. Right. I wonder if I would have made different decisions and felt more worthy and deserving and had not put myself in um, harmful decisions when I was younger. Um, I, I want him to know that he is still loved and he is still worthy and deserving um, of whatever he wants to have in this world, regardless of the poor choices that his dad has made, that we just live our best lives for us and that I always point him back to God. Yeah. Because I can't be his everything. And I know that. And I can't fill some of these broken pieces that might come to light as he gets older. But God can. Just like he filled in the pieces for me. I hope that answered yeah. what you were asking. But I just think I would encourage you to... And if it's hard, if your faith walk is hard, I, I would encourage you to find maybe somebody in your life who has that relationship. I, I can see my life so clearly of like my non-Christian walk and my Christian walk. Mm -hmm. um, I operated so differently in both of these worlds. And so I'm actually grateful for like the real heavy brokenness of my non-Christian life because it just gives me so much power and perspective in this side of my faith walk. It's, there's just you, more to it. What, like when you say that your, your walk with God and without God is completely different. You mean like, do you think that that word would be the walk of like surrender or like what was so dramatically different about your walk with or without God? Like what was the, the big, th what are the big things with that? Do you, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah definitely surrendering. Okay. I don't know if I would have gotten to this place without absolute complete brokenness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so instead of looking at my situation as this like life altering, traumatic, like hor horrific time in my life, it was more of like, this is where the, I got to step into who I really am. I got to be transformed and really do some heavy work we're not called, like, I, I just remember feeling like I always had the weight of the world on my shoulders. It was always up to me to figure everything out. It was always up to me to um, live my best life. And it's pretty freeing to say, no, it's, it's not all up to me. I can, I can give that 
to a higher power that is wiser and knows better and is willing to be of, of service, um, it makes you not feel so alone. And, uh, I, but I do think that it was in the absolute brokenness and I, that I had to surrender and just trust that there was a God out there that really did love me and was willing to guide me and pick up those pieces. And I, and I've allowed him to, to do that. Yeah. I didn't allow, I didn't trust him because before it was like, you're mean, you're judgmental. You don't love me. You don't care for me. You really don't want the best for me. And now it, then it was like, I have absolutely no choice, but to lean into knowing you. And I had a me, I have amazing mentors. Like that was the thing. I was so desperate to learn and grow and understand who he really is. And for me to live a better life through this really hard season that I would seek advice. I would seek counsel. I would ask to go out on that coffee date. I would have wise women pour into my life and I allowed them. And when I couldn't make what I thought maybe would be wise choices, I'd let them. I leaned into them and just to be like, how do I just live life again? And then they would tell me and I would just do it. I just wow. did what I was told from people that I really, really respected so that I could wake up the next day and I could move each step forward and forward. So sometimes it wasn't, a lot of it wasn't my own strength. It was just me willing to be vulnerable enough to say, I need help here. What do you think I should do? And having faith and trust in that person to give me wise wisdom and then go, okay, I'm just going to do it. You told me to do it. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to just trust you because I don't trust myself right now. Look where I'm at. Um, but I'm going to trust you and I'm going to trust this journey. And now I'm in a different season than I was in the beginning of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's pretty amazing. So it sounds like Mentoring, community, counseling are some of the immediate things to get involved with. Um, and then things started to kind of unfold from there. And your relationship with God exploded. And I would say that probably you surrendering eventually probably led to like freedom, essentially. Mm -hmm. And so now living in that freedom and surrendering um, lens of your life. Now you're in another season and this season is, um, you know, starting a business, which is going really well and, um, and is growing, you know, so what is your faith walk look like right now? Like um, now that you're where you're at today, what does it look like now for you? I mean, not that it would be completely that different, but just, now that you're at this level of where you're at, the season or whatever, um, what does it look like? Like faith, like basically, you know, you're getting to where you want to be and where you are, I guess what you're saying. Uh, it's still, I would say the faith walk is still just as heavy now as it was in the very beginning. It just looks a little different now. Uh -huh. uh, but I still have so much um, that I have to turn over to him and give to him and trust him with. And it's not easy. That's why I still default back to counseling and mentors and people in my life, because I slip into that old thought process of fear and anxiety and worry of the future instead of seeing always carries me and using yeah. that to go, okay, I can go another day. But I still have my moments that I slip back into that because starting your own business is not easy. If, you know, I want, I dream of being able to have my own space for us and for this to be something. And um, I have to trust him with that because I believe that he, he opened up my eyes and my heart to having this business. It was not on my radar. I did not have this like dream of, having a food business, I really believe he opened up that door for me and I walked through it and I've just got to continue to trust him in that. But I waver and then I go, I go back to my guidance and my support team and the people who go, nope, and they just 
put you back onto the right path and you're like, okay, my conversations have changed. Like I just talk to them all day long in my head, you know, or like yeah. I'm praying more and more intentional about, I just invite you in. I invite you into everything that I'm doing. If you open this door, I trust that it's from you. If you close the door, that's okay. I'm going to trust that that's from you. But I still have moments that I let fear and anxiety creep in. Um, and that's why you continue to, like, I have a support system that I continue to reach out to where I'm like, I'm struggling again. I know the difference is I know better. Like, mm-hmm. I know I can call myself out and be like, you're not walking in faith. You're letting fear show up. You're letting anxiety show up. I think that's just normal. And yeah. Human Whereas before you were like, what is faith? What does that even mean? Yes. Yes. And then now you're like, like, I know you're going to carry me. You carried me through a very traumatic time. You've had so many amazing people show up in my life. You have supported us. We have all of our needs met. Why would I not think that you would continue to meet our needs and then some? So, but that's just the trauma. So some of the traumas of what I've went through get triggered and the fear and anxiety creeps in. And then that's, got to give that over to him. You got to give that over to a counselor. You got to get, have your support system come in. Um, I make sure I take care of myself, move my body so that my head's on straight. It really helps me to flush out my anxiety and make healthy food choices so that um, I'm nourishing my body so that I'm mentally strong. Like they, it all ties in together with the self-care piece that's really important for us to have in our lives. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it's a piece that is part of why I love blondies and what I'm super passionate about, even though it seems really silly with these like little bites that this is like my, they seem nothing if you're presented it. But to me, it's like, I want to teach people how to feel, find ways to heal themselves and nourish their bodies in a healthier way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love that a door was open through something that you're passionate about, you know, like, like, I mean, not that you're not passionate about esthetician stuff either, but just, this seems just a little bit more like a deeper rooted situation when you were, you know, being told that you couldn't have kids and then this, like, I didn't know that was part of your story. Like, that's really that's really a whole podcast in and of itself, you know, um, doctors though, my God, some mm-hmm. of them, some of them, not all of them. <laughs> it's tough. It's just like black and white. It's like, dude, yeah. quit reading out of a book, quit Googling on your phone, dude. I already did all that. Like, you know, but anyway, I, uh, it's funny too, because like, as you're talking, I'm like, you know, in some ways, for me, like in my past, like, um, trauma and stuff has always been a little bit, it's, you know, I'm not going to say easier, but fight or flight, when that kicks in, it almost brings this like drug of like, um, clarity. Like you, uh, for some reason, like what, for me, it's like, I suddenly am like, I know exactly what to do to survive. I know exactly what to do. And I do have a faith. I do have faith, but I, I I just feel like I get more clear sense of what it is I need to do next. It's weird. It's like, I know the faith is there. I know God's going to take care of me, you know, and I, and I start to like, I just, I'm like this, but I'm like crazy feeling, but I'm also like, I get so clarity. Like I get just like, this is what I need to do. This is what, this is what needs to happen. And then it's not until things settle down where the work really comes in for me, where I start to doubt, where I start to, it's just weird. Like it's a different kind of faith, like bizarre. It's like, I almost have less faith in less traumatic times than I do in traumatic times. Like, yeah. um, I don't know. It's like in what you said, which would really, uh, help, which, really brought to light something that I think about too is, is in your faith journey. Now you, every single day you're looking for a gold nugget to just hold on to like, you know, why were the gold nuggets so easier to see when trauma was happening for me anyways, than it is when things are not traumatic. 
Like it's almost harder for me to have faith. My faith is challenged more. Is that, am I making any sense at all? Like, Mm -hmm. do you feel that at all? Like, I don't know. But I I think that's why brokenness comes up because then God's like, oh no, no, don't forget. You still need me. Mm -hmm. And then you're Mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. I, I still have to like, oh, you lost sight of me. Mm-hmm. this showed up like it, it's just rewiring our brain to be like I'm, I know I need you every day whether I'm living in drama or I'm not living in drama things are great um, one of my mentors taught me like every meeting I'm a part of how do I invite God into that I want you here I want you to work through me I want you to show up here I want what your will is in this mm-hmm. so it's like made me more intentional about having him throughout the daily parts of my life yeah instead of like but I hear you because it's like oh how do I see your like goodness when everything seems to be fine and dandy for this season yeah um and I think I have so many heavy things on my heart not I'm not quite there yet I'm still like I need you for like ev- all the things <laughs> Yeah. They'll need you for all these things. Yeah. I would say I kind of feel that way too. Like that there's definitely some, like, that's why I'm saying like, when you get to that place where maybe some things are solved, then other things are going to come up. Like, it's just always something, you know, it's always something and less times are less traumatic than others, you know, but it's like, it's just crazy having faith because it's like, you could actually look at a situation where where literally nothing you're doing is making sense, like your choices and it's everything you're supposed to do and nothing's traumatic is happening. It's just that you're making decisions that are like, you question yourself where like when you're in a traumatic spot, it's like you have no choice, but to move forward. Like, you know, you're like, okay, well this is opened up. got to go here. Like it's, you know what I mean? Whereas like when you're in a situation where you're like, why are you going to rock the boat? Okay. (laughs) Like the boat is being rocked. Why would you do that? Like everything's fine right now. Like, why would you do that? Like, that's where I struggle. Like my faith is just like, oh my gosh. Like, why are you, why would you want me to do that? Like, it makes no sense. You know, like that's another area of like, there's always work to be done. Yeah. There's always work to be done, Tiff. There's always work to be done. Recently, um, I was praying and um, I just kind of heard God, you know, during these COVID times, I've really just done a lot of quietness. Have you done a lot of quietness or what? Uh, I don't know. I've been trying to. (laughs) It just seems like it's happening more like. (laughs) Yeah. Just. You have the space to do it. Yeah, desperation at some points where I'm hiding in my car and the, the quietness happens because I'm hiding from kids or whatever, or just like my schedules open up a little bit in a different way. You know, I'm not so concentrated mentally on some stuff. And so my mental, I don't know, it's just like kind of freed up a little bit. God said to me, Go, I want you to go work on this garden. Okay. Just go work on this garden. And it turns out, I'm going to laugh because it's so, I have literally, like, I love to garden, but I like, I do love to garden, but I only like pro- d- days that, I only like projects that take a day. Like, I don't go past a day. I will work my tail end off until it's done, but literally stopping is not something I do, like, ever. And so, this has been the most humbling project ever because I have cried. I have, I have, I got a kidney stone in the middle of it, which postponed oh something for a while I had scratches all on my body and my husband's sitting there from the background just like are you done yet like are you gonna stop okay she's gonna keep going she's gonna keep going she's just gonna keep going and like there's just one huge part of our yard that is covered in blackberry bushes and tall grass and I just I knew it needed to be dealt with, you know, and my husband, yeah, he would do it in his own time, but that's not good enough. Okay. I got to get in there and I got to do it myself. And also I feel like I should do a garden because that's what I was praying about. And, and all it, and it showed me just like humbled me. It completely humbled me to the, like, nothing is going to happen in a day. Mm -hmm. This isn't going to happen in a day. It is impossible 
to happen in a day. It, this has been three, this has been a, like, actually it's been like four weeks, five weeks considering, um, five weeks considering the kidney stone put me off a week. Cause I was like, had no energy. Right. So, um, so five weeks of doing one project to me that says failure. Like it doesn't, it's not, it's not logical. It's not logical, but like in my mind, I should have been done in like this search short amount of time <laughs> and the wisdom that has come in my head from, I believe God was like, nothing great is in a day. Like it doesn't take, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it takes time, you know? And then when you do a garden, you know, when it's all done and it's like, or when you're done a project and it's all done, and it just looks so simple. Like it didn't take that. Like, it looks like something that didn't take that long and it's like perfect. And you're just like, I'm still working on that. Like how, why is it like that? You know, something so in the background takes for eternity. And then you look at it and it's like, it's so beautifully done. And yet it's a simple like thing, you know? Um, I don't know. It's mind boggling to me. It's the process and I'm still processing it too, because I don't know. Have you buried yourself in a blackberry bush before? It's no, I ugly. wouldn't want to. It's it's <laughs> ugly. It is ugly. I believe it. I cried. I had like things in my and Brian's like, why don't you wear a long sleeve? Because the long sleeve will get caught, and then I have to like move the shoulder. You know, it's just like I did not want to lose. Like I was not going to lose to these bushes. You know, and I did. I heard. I just. I heard in the in the wrestle of the weeds. You know, just guidance. I saw the guidance in there, you know, and I've heard, and I heard like, it takes time, things take time, you know? So in my faith journey and in the days where you're looking for the gold nuggets and just to how to go forward, that it's not going to happen in a day for me, you know? Um, so then when I see your story, it's like, wow, it really, beauty is really in the journey, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so trying to grab hold of that. I'm trying to grab hold of that, you know? So, but back to your story too, is that, um, you know, some of the things that you've, you've talked about, I wanted to mention, um, gosh, getting to the place where you are today and those gold nuggets that you're picking up as you do your faith journey, like starting a new business or getting into your new business. Is that what you, you know, compared to what I've just told you about the garden and just my life and stuff like that. Is that similar to where it is for you too? Or it's a long question. Oh yeah. Yeah. I need those little golden nuggets to hold on to. Um, Can you give me examples because I'm, of what it's like for you? Yeah. So like even just career wise, um, mm -hmm. I didn't know that I would be stepping out of my aesthetics career. Uh, it, of what I had leaned on to for years now. And um, God really did open up this crazy opportunity for me to have this food business. It was not on my radar. It was me complaining about all of our local coffee shops, not providing healthy gluten-free treats. And that was really how this all came together. Yeah. And trusting that like, he knows our heart's desires and he opens up those doors. Are we going to walk through them? And so it, I'm releasing this part of this old me and stepping into this new space of having this business and diving into it and not knowing what I'm doing, but then having like the little pieces that are like, you've got this, keep moving forward. Day by day is like when somebody says that they loved what I am providing or it was amazing it tasted really good or somebody's like I totally believe in you and what you're doing this is so good keep going and then I'm like oh why that's so awesome that they just said that because I totally questioned what I've gotten myself into and then I'm like okay I take that little golden nugget and then I go okay I can go a couple more days and then I have somebody else that pours into me and I take that and then I just keep going forward um, especially with everything going on with COVID, I was like, I really, if I hadn't done a lot of the, my face walk, I think I would have been absolutely wrecked by the transitioning of losing my job as an esthetician, losing a lot of my business for blondies and then going, okay, now like, here we go again. I'm like, feel like I'm right back here at the very beginning of my life, just starting all over. 
knowing though that like, what can I find the goodness in this? How can I learn and grow from this? You've carried me through this. You still have me on this journey for a reason. If you want me to keep going forward, open those doors. Like I, that's where I have a lot of conversations with God. And that's where I feel like I get a lot of my golden nuggets to move forward is inviting him into the process, not excluding him out because I'm scared and I have fear and anxiety, inviting him in. And then I, I feel like just people come in and they're like, no, you need to go all in or you need to keep doing this. This is great. And then it's like, oh, okay, I take that when I don't feel super confident in what I'm doing. I take those little pieces. And when I'm struggling, I hear that person in my head or I hear like, I want to, even for myself, it's like, I want to believe in what I'm doing. And I want to just say that I walked through all of this hard stuff and I came out of it scared out of my mind, but I did it anyways, because I want to create something bigger and better for myself and my son. I hope that answered that. that was yeah, amazing. that makes a lot of sense. You know, I mean, um, and I loved like even what you said earlier too, just how, what the journey looks like for you is so, um, like individual, like you can't, it doesn't make sense all the time, you know, like that's, what's so interesting is like the world will tell you that one thing, but you're getting a direction in this way. And yes, you need directions along this way that you're walking, you know, but the walk is strong, you know, you've got some, some sturdy underneath it, you know, you got something to lean on a, a nice foundation, you know, which is, which is cool. Um, it's, it has always come down to that. You got me out of this before. Why wouldn't you do it now? The journey's still the same. It's still the same. It's not like he just like, he's like, okay, we're done. Good job. You made it this far. Now you're on your own. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> that would be scary. Oh, I know. I know. Don't and, leave me hanging. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I mean, he's there, he was there, he's just as much here as he was there, you know, and yeah, it's just interesting. So Donna, um, you know, your story is, is one of different, lots of different hopes, shall we say, of just like health and, um, you know, drug addiction, spousal situation, single momhood faith, uh, and then another faith part with the COVID stuff, just, you know, staying true to what you call, what you feel confident and called to do. Um, I mean, there's just a lot of your life that is just so amazing and has a lot to offer people. And to anyone who's listening, um, you know, Donna is welcome to, uh, talk more in depth about, you know, areas of her journey with you, if, if you reach out and I'll have that information available to you. Um, so is there anything else, Donna, that you want to add to this conversation? Yeah, I do. With that note of, um, being a person to reach out to uh -huh. in the beginning stages of everything happening, I really wanted to find another woman who had um, found out that her husband was hiding an addiction from her and the trauma of that and then being left and then being a, like I really wanted to find me mm -hmm. somebody who had gone through the similar situation and see if they made it out because some part of that is like am I gonna make it out of this am I going to be okay and when you're in the beginning stages of that trauma you do question, or am I going to make it through this? Am I going to be okay? What is my life going to look like? And it would have been helpful for me to have had, to have maybe found a podcast or a mo even a movie or something that I could have leaned onto or questioned that person and been like, how did you do it? How did you make it out of this? Like, what, is this feel normal? And I just, I want to be that person that gives somebody faith and hope that you will make it through this, that you will come out through the other side. I know that it doesn't feel like you're going to, but you will. And I know that God put me through this journey and on this for a reason to be of service to others. And so I do want to be there and available because I would have loved that if somebody, if I had found somebody in my shoes that it would have been like, oh, I'm about six months, I'm a year ahead of you or I'm years ahead of you. 
you're going to make it through it. It's so, it comes with such a peace of mind from somebody who's done the walk. Sure. I, I was so blessed to have so many people tell me I would make it through it. And I did hold on to that. But if I would have had somebody who known exactly the trauma that I had walked through, tell me that it would have given me a really big, like leap of faith to have been like, okay, I can do this. And so I want to be that person for other women out there. You hear that you guys, she wants to be that person and that person she is. So Donna, thank you so much for coming on here. And um, for all you guys listening, Donna is second to last episode of season two. So enjoy the listen, reach out. Um, hope you guys are doing well. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a great week. Thank you. Thank you.